I'm not confident while speaking in English. This is a common comment that I come across from the learners during group discussions and also during my training sessions. Many of you would have also come across this comment. Well, what happens when you have overconfidence? Just like how you gain confidence over a period of time, overconfidence can also cause something. Stay with me for the next couple of minutes and find out more about this. My name is Rini Rose and if you are visiting the channel for the first time, do not forget to read the channel description. What happens when you become overconfident? Now we focus on mental setup and also about language as a channel. So I'll speak about the English language. It's very important to be confident in life, not only while speaking in English. Even when you speak in your mother tongue, you need to be confident. And I have been speaking about confidence. Many YouTube creators and language trainers speak about confidence. You need to be confident. And how do I develop my confidence is a major concern. But let me ask you, what happens when you become overconfident? The first one. Some learners feel that I have been taking 60 sessions or 60 classes and I think I know something. The minute you have this overconfidence, it starts ruining. It's a subconscious effort again. Now it's okay to track your progress and say that, wow, I've taken 60 sessions and I've learned something. The minute you begin feeling that, oh, I have done a lot and I think I need to stop learning, there begins your regress. As I told you, it's okay to track, it's okay to know what you're doing, but do not ever think that you can stop learning. That's not the right attitude. Do not ever have the feeling that, oh, I have done a lot and I think I just have to stop it. No, there is no stop. The second point is watching movies. Many learners feel that I have watched so many English movies and I think I know a lot of phrases. I'm quite familiar with the American accent, the British accent or whatever accent and I think I'm taking notes and fine with everything. It's okay to watch movies. Definitely it has got some contribution to your language development but that's not the end of everything. Just by watching movies do you think you have progressed a lot? No. Language development, the evolution of you as a learner in any language takes place when you focus on a lot of things, on a lot of aspects. So it's not just watching movies. Of course, you can learn vocabulary. You will get exposed to a lot of different usages, slangs, everything. That's good. It's good to be a part of different aspects and factors of language. But just by watching movies, you cannot say I've taken some notes and I think that's fine and that's it. It's one of the ways. It is one of the ways of learning the language or developing your language. You get used to the accent and a lot of things. I've already done a video on that particular topic. I have left the link to that video in the description to this video. Please watch. The next point is I know a lot of idioms and phrases. Many learners are quite fascinated learning idioms and phrases it's good it adds flavor and sometimes some kind of fragrance to your sentences it gives a different rhythm and tone and meaning it makes it very colorful but just by knowing some idioms and phrases and by spitting out a few idioms and phrases you don't become a very good communicator it's not essential to always use idioms and phrases as I told you, it's not always required that you use color and you have to add flavor. You can also communicate in simple English and even by using some kind of words, you'll be able to convey the meaning. Now, just by knowing a couple of idioms and phrases, you're not going to become fluent or you will not become a very good person with language. Language covers a lot of aspects. I have seen a lot of people uh, engaging in conversations and also saying I have learned so many idioms and phrases and I think I've become quite fluent with the language. Next thing is I've always been speaking about this. These are the different skills that you have to work upon. Now some people forget writing. Okay, it's fine. But without listening and reading, don't ever think that you'll become fluent when it comes to speaking. 
listening is important reading is important and of course speaking also adds to it now many people think that i just have to learn these idioms and phrases i just have to watch movies and some kind of web series and i get exposed to everything no it's not like that you should expose yourself to different types of language and that's how you understand the different contexts and the different usages suppose you are learning prepositions the word into and onto okay i hope you know the difference in the usages i'm not going to elaborate that here but it has got different usages you get uh, a clear understanding when you read different contexts that's what i'm trying to tell you uh, with the help of an example and sometimes people think that i don't have to ask for help uh, i have been doing this i have been engaging in conversations i have been learning for maybe uh, 10 years or 15 years now i don't have to ask for help it is always okay to ask for help whenever i have a doubt i approach my tutors even as a language trainer if i have some kind of doubt with the method or with the technique that i have been using with a particular group of learners i always clarify that with my tutors or i try to find resources that can help me with this teaching process okay and it's definitely okay to ask for help when you communicate if you have enrolled for a course or for some kind of sessions on a particular platform it's fine to discuss with the tutor and track if you have genuine platforms they can definitely help you because sometimes even after learning for a very long time it's good to assess yourself with the help of an expert i have seen lot of uh, people saying that don't ask for help you don't have to even enroll for a course you don't have to even speak to a tutor on a platform there are learners who require external help who really need external help and when people say don't ask for help you're actually misleading and misguiding such learners self learning is the best method but everybody may not be in the right track self learning could be a new method for many people and just to know whether you are in the right track you need to discuss and find out if you're in the right track instead of wasting time and it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to check and clarify so tutors trainers professors people who, people who have reached a particular level can ask for help don't ever feel that i have been doing this for 40 to 50 years and now i don't need any help or i don't need the guidance of anyone that's completely rubbish and foolish because i have come across a lot of leaders also uh, speaking that way but you would have come across genuine people people who have reached a particular level um in their life the success story is saying that of course i am ready to ask for help whenever i need it i ask for help now overconfidence you may think that only learners get associated with overconfidence sometimes tutors also can become really bossy and overconfident i don't want to name a few channels but there are a few channels where even if the learner is engaging in a beautiful flowy conversation there will be tutors correcting and explaining so much so much of elaboration and explanation is not going to help a learner it's okay to correct a person if the person really needs it or towards the end of the session you can take permission and correct it if it is required but explaining and elaborating beyond a particular point is not required like suppose when you use a particular phrase uh you may not know the technical side behind that phrase for example uh once in a blue moon okay so something that happens rarely or you can say occasionally something that's not usual so you may not uh be aware that it's a kind of usage that we have in english so now you don't have to pinpoint everything because learning should happen naturally of course you can add saying that oh that's a beautiful usage and this is the particular feature you can of course say that whether it's an idiom phrase or uh, a daily expression or a metaphor or simile that you have used but you don't have to keep explaining and elaborating and show all your knowledge there with that learner on a particular platform it simply leads to inundation of so many things so many points and maybe the learner will not be able to carry everything at the same time so pay attention to such things um even as tutors and trainers when i take sessions for teachers also i tell them there could be lot of things that 
you are aware of that you know already from your experience but it's not necessary to tell the learners that you you see my qualification is this and i've been working on all these things uh it's okay to share the achievement but you don't have to be bossy about what you have been doing in life until and unless they really have the interest to find out more from you it's fine to guide a person but it's not fine to be bossy and always load them with so much of information so this is something that i wanted to bring to your notice overconfidence can really ruin you should be confident in life not only while speaking in the english language in life when you carry yourself when you walk from that place to this place also you need to be confident sometimes parents encourage the overconfidence of children I've already mentioned that in one of my videos don't simply encourage children only to use accent or only to speak in english or only to showcase something that everybody is going to be proud about of course you can encourage about what they have been doing about their skills but too much of uh, praise and too many compliments definitely it's not going to help and of course as parents uh um, many people are interested in highlighting the achievements of their kids their children or even their learners but too much can really spoil uh the skill the basic interest of a person of a child so don't overdo things even when you are learning don't overdo it when you are learning english also please don't overdo it and become so obsessed with accent and let it be like these steps Okay you begin with the basic and then you climb and then add all the color and fragrance happy learning thank you so much